this is a topic the Holy Spirit has given me a mandate and the almost three years I've been on Facebook and the year and a half I've been on YouTube he's been having me hammer home the message on this so this is something that's very important you need to listen closely to what Jesus says in two separate passages and understand what Jesus is really saying <clears throat> before I get started this is this is Christian's favorite of passage here that they that they uh, misunderstand to claim that they have eternal security. They say that Jesus says in the Bible that God has given me all the Christians and no man can remove not one of them from my hand. That's true. No man can take any of us who are Christians out of Jesus' hand. No no man can ever do that. No man, no person, no place, no thing, nothing can do that. But 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 God gave us free will and we are free to walk away from Jesus hand not be taken away by anybody but to walk away on our, our own self so let's look at the scripture and see what Jesus has to say two very important scripture two of my favorite in the entire Bible let's start with John chapter 15 verses 1 to 10 as always all I use is a KJV and I'll give you commentaries that go along to explain what the what scripture is saying I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Jesus Christ is the vine. The Jews are the original branches of the vine, and the Gentiles are the grafted in wild branches of the vine. And Jesus' Father God is the vine keeper. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Every Christian First of all, for a branch to be in Jesus, for a branch to be in me, for a Christian to be in him, for a person to be in Jesus, we have to be a Christian. A non-Christian is not in Jesus, are they? they don't, they're not one of the branches of, of Christ's vine, are they? Okay, so he's talking to Christians. Every Christian that does not bear forth fruit, that does not live for Jesus, that does not obey his commandments in the Bible, that does not repent of sins and stay pure, God will take him away. So what does it mean to be taken away from the vine? It means the branch is taken out of the vine we're no longer part of Christ. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Jesus says, and Christians, unless you abide in me, abide, live for me, serve me, worship me, do what the Bible says, repent of your sins the way that the Bible says, 250 times plus, then you can't be in me, you can't be part of the vine. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. <coughs> so Christians, if you're staying in Jesus in the vine as a branch, you abide in him, you live for him, you serve him, you read the Bible, you pray, you repent when you sin, do all those things, keep his commandments, then you abide. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are and they are burned. If a Christian does not abide in Jesus, does not stay in him, love him, serve him, worship him, live for him, repent of your sins after you're saved, then you wither, you die off the vine, and you're cast into the fire, into hell, in the lake of fire, and you're burned. You get this? The Bible is so simple, my friends. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Continue to serve Jesus, to live for him, to worship him, to read the Bible, to pray, to repent of your sins after you're saved. If ye keep my commandments, and ye shall abide, stay, live, worship, repent in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Very plain and simple. Now let's go to my favorite chapter in the Bible. Revelation chapter, let's see, let's find it here. Revelation chapter 3 is my, is my very favorite chapter in the entire Bible. I'm only going to read verse 1 to 5. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis, and again, the church of Sardis, to be part of this church in the Bible, to be part of the church, you have to be saved by Jesus Christ's blood, baptized, dunked under water, and filled with the Holy Spirit. He's talking to true Christians here. And unto the church, the angel of the church of Sardis, in Sardis, true Christians, write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, but thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Jesus is saying, Christians in the church of Sardis, I know you think you're living for me, but you're backslidden. Verse 2, 
Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Jesus is saying, repent, Christians, as you are about to die spiritually. You're about to be cast into the lake of fire. Verse 3, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. You got that? If we're already sinless after we're saved and we don't have to worry about it, why is Jesus Christ in his own words saying to hold fast and repent? If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. If these Christians don't repent of their sins and turn back to Jesus soon, they'll miss the rapture, Jesus is saying. Verse 4, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Only a few Christians are repenting and are ready to be raptured and live with Jesus Christ in heaven. In verse 5, this is the kicker. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Or in other words, this is what Jesus is saying. He whose garments are not spotless or does not overcome, I will, will, will blot out his name from the book of life and deny him before the Father and the angels. You got that, my friends? It is, it's as plain and plain and simple as you can be. And further down in verse 19, he's telling the church of Laodicea, he'd rather they be hot or cold earlier in the chapter, but they're lukewarm. He'll vomit them out of his mouth. He says in verse 19, repent, repent, repent. Twice Jesus is saying repent, repent, repent. Twice in the same chapter. So what's it going to be, my friends? The bottom line is this. You heard the word from Jesus Christ. I don't care what man says. I don't care what I say. I don't care what you say. I care what I can prove in the Holy Bible. And I've already proved to you in two places. And I've got 250 of these. Message me. I'll share it with you. It's on a Word document. I've gathered it all up. If you can listen to what I just told you and read it in your Word and verify what I just said in your Word and still don't believe the truth that you have to repent, then Satan's already got your heart. You're already damned and heading to hell. And there's very little hope for you unless some miracle happens that, where Christ can grab you and you can repent. He's not going to make anybody come to, to him. Again, he has free will. He gives us all free will. No man can ever remove us from Christ's hand once we're saved. But again, we're free to walk away. As always, I have a prayer. I have six next steps and a, and a, a little blurb to tell you to contact me if you'd like me to pray for anything for you. I love you guys. That's why I do this. I don't make any money off of this. I don't accept a penny for anything that I do. I do this all day and all night because I love you and I want to see you go to heaven. I want to see you raptured and I want to see backslidden Christians saved, repenting, turned back to Jesus once again before it's too late. May God bless you and next time the Lord lays something in my heart, I'll bring it on. It might be daily. It might be every few days. It might be once a week. I don't know how often it will be. When he lays something in my heart, it's going to be put on this channel. For you to be able to read and share with everybody you possibly can, my friends. I love you all. May God bless you. Have a blessed day.